Hey, 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 what is going on with y'all, man? Look, it's Black Balloon, and I'm coming back with another video, so y'all already know what's going on. Alright, y'all, look, today we are here to expose yet um, another thing about Stranger Things, the show. The recent show, um, they just had a fourth season um, back in July. And obviously, you know, pretty much everyone knows about Stranger Things. Um, it's it's everywhere. Um, and especially with this latest season, with um, that song, Running Up That Hill, da -da 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 -da, that going viral and being all over TikTok and, you know... Um, just I think with this past season, the show, the show probably, you know, it reached new levels in my opinion because I've seen it on things that I've never seen it on before. Even though it went pretty viral like back in 2018, but I think this season it just had a, something different about it. It just um, I think even more people that weren't aware of the show watched it or at least heard about it, right? Um, and in this particular season. Now, I, I didn't catch on to this. I'm not going to lie. I did not know anything about this because when I watched the show and, and I'm talking about the Hellfire Club, that's what we're here to talk about today. What we're here to actually talk about the history of the real Hellfire Club. Now, I didn't know. Like I said, I didn't know anything about this. Um, I actually just found this out over the last two weeks when I took a break from YouTube and, you know, I was listening, um, um, I was listening to Pastor Darby. Now, a lot of y'all know who he is on YouTube, Pastor Stephen Darby that died back in 2017, probably the most amazing pastor I've ever heard, um, you know, preach, do a sermon, um, just all around the board. Um, the guy, the guy is just basically the truth. If you don't know him, go and check him out immediately, right? So I just happened to be listening to one of his videos, um, which I do all the time. I go back and listen to a bunch of his videos, um, like I'm sure a lot of you have before. And in one of his videos, he just happened to talk about Benjamin Franklin and the fact that Benjamin Franklin used to have, you know, basically was a pedophile used to have sex with boys uh, and he was a part of the hellfire club now when i heard that i was like whoa now the sermon was years ago the sermon was i think back in 2017 right around like the first season of stranger things now stranger things didn't come out with that little hellfire theme until just now 2022 with the first i mean with the fourth season and now they went on to have, they got Hellfire fans, they got Hellfire shirts, they have um, Hellfire stickers, all kind of shit. And I think the first episode of season four is the Hellfire Club. Now that's what their little, you know, group at school, uh, basically like, you know how it is in high school where you have the little, you know, the little nerds, uh, sort of emo kids or whatever, right? So that's how they played it in the show. This was just some you know, little hellfire club, the little nerd kids and playing games and all of that good stuff. Right. Um, so in the show, they use it as like they actually summoned Vecna during this game that they were a part of. I mean, that they were playing with their little hellfire club group. They didn't you know, they didn't show it in any kind of any other way of what the actual real history of the hellfire club is. Right. So when we think of the Hellfire Club, this was before everything. Basically, it was a it was a satanic sex cult. And this was before everything. This is basically where people like Stanley Kubrick got the idea of Eyes Wide Shut from. Um and a bunch of different movies that basically represent the, you know, the sex the sex cults basically. Um because you have, you have to think about it. They get this stuff from somewhere. You know how in Eyes Wide Shut, they had the super real, um, super weird ritual scene. It's, it was basically like a sex cult scene, right? And you have to think to yourself, where 
where does this kind of stuff come from? It comes from way back in history because the um, the Hellfire Club it basically dates back to the 1700s. Um, it was it was originally a British secret society that was basically designed for you know just I guess certain high standing individuals, right? Um, the purpose of the club was to provide a place for like minded and intelligent people that quote unquote wanted to be themselves you know you could you could almost call it like how the illuminati was considering that this was started back in the 1700s and the illuminati was started back in the 1776 it kind of goes the same as far as how they worded of the people that you know were a part of the occult um or part of the secret society of the hellfire club right so um it says the first official hellfire club was because there were multiple clubs that um had the name hellfire the first one was founded in London in 718 by Philip, Duke of Wharton. And it was also um, a handful of basically other high society friends of his. And it says others soon followed, including the infamous Hellfire Club of Francis Dashwood. So like I said, there were basically multiple Hellfire Clubs, right? Um, it reads, Dashwood was a bit of a rebel. One legend says that he impersonated the monarch and that he made efforts to seduce whoever Tazarina Ann was while in Russia. Inspired by the brainchild of the Duke of Wharton, Dashwood had a vision for yet another club that made him famous, the Hellfire Club. Eventually, the founders altered its name slightly to become the Order of the Knights of St. Francis, right? And this is a picture of... Well, I guess a drawing of Philip Duke of Wharton. Um, basically, we, I'll, I'll continue reading on a little bit just so we can get a little bit of history of it, right? Um, it says, Dashwood thought that this would be an ideal location for the club's new meeting place. It was, it was remote enough for club businesses to be conducted without fear of eavesdroppers, but was in quite the state of disrepair. Um, and this is basically where they're talking about because they had it in a cave. Like, I think one of the main places for the club was a cave. Um, I, I'll see if I can get some pictures of it up, up while I'm talking. So it says only a few columns and walls remain, but a cluster of half a dozen arcs were added along with the new tower underneath the Abbey. Dashwood had a series of caves carved out from an existing cave. It was decorated again with mythological themes phallic symbols and other items of sexual nature and this is kind of like basically where the eyes wide shut ritual catholic christian pagan stuff comes from with all the mask and all that good stuff they were doing this back in the 1700s right so just kind of like how the bohemian grove is and all that other stuff they they held meetings twice a year invitations were sent by the prior and costumes were required to be worn by attendees. These meetings were recorded in 1779 in a book called Nocturnal Rebels. So once again, that's where the mask and the costumes come from way back in the 1700s with the sex cult stuff, right? It says every member attending would be allowed to eat well and enjoy the companies of cheerful ladies of lively dispositions. Sex and wine certainly seem to have been a major part of the rituals. Even the landscape was sexualized. The gardens included a temple of Venus and a pilar of Venus, if I said that correct, as well as statues of Pan and Priapus, perfect for a club dedicated to divine procreation. And here we have Benjamin Franklin, who was obviously a founder of, you know, um, <laughs> this country the usa or whatever so benjamin franklin is you know he's the most famous member of the club um just to read off it says who attended these meetings members included notorious john wilkes who politically spat with fellow monk and founding member the earl of sandwich i don't know who that is um and would expose the activities of the club to um, cement its notoriety in the public imagination, right? Um, so moving on, it says by the middle of seventeen of seventeen sixties, the club appeared to be on the wane, meaning it was kind of, 
you know, um, it wasn't really active as it once was in the early 1700s. It says the lavish abbey where meetings were held was no longer viable as a venue. Dashwood had, had not totally abandoned the idea of the Hellfire Club. He merely transitioned venue from the abbey to the caves he had renovated that we talked about earlier. Now, what makes this so interesting, you know, and I know as far as topic wise, it's, it's not the most relevant to what's going on right now. But I thought this was super interesting because when I searched it up on YouTube and just, you know, um, other other places where people post videos, there's not many videos about the history of the Hellfire Club. Now, there are there are um, a few videos on it because people knew about this. People that are history buffs and like to go over this kind of stuff. They made themselves aware. But literally unless you guys can find one i didn't find not one video that tied this back to um stranger things now there are more examples of the hellfire club in popular culture i'm not saying that it's not because it's it's used i think it was even used in x-men back in 2011 but it's not it, it's not as like right in front of your face like the way that stranger things used it you know what i'm saying because they made it seem like this was just some little club that little kids um, thought of and they presented it in a show in a way that it was catchy and cool but if you actually look up the vans if you look up the vans that the Hell, the hellfire club vans that they just released they actually have a little baphomet head on the side of the vans and when i saw that i was like yo a bunch of kids are about to be wearing these hellfire club vans and they have no idea that this was a satanic sex cult they have no idea, but that's the way that these shows work today. That's the way that the industry works. They put this stuff right in, in your face. Now you're wearing this kind of stuff and you have no idea what it is about. You have no idea where it came from. I didn't have an idea. I didn't even know the Hellfire Club was a sex cult back in the 1700s. You're not thinking about stuff like that, which is why I had to really credit Pastor Darby because he didn't relate it to Stranger Things. He was just talking in a sermon and just happened to be talking about you know gatekeepers of the world and when he brought up certain names he just said you know that he was having sex with little boys and and he was a part of the hellfire club and then it made me do a little bit more digging into jeffrey epstein so we're gonna get into this clip really quick it's a short clip with um what is his name i think tucker carson or something like that where they talk about Jeffrey Epstein and the Hellfire Club. So this lets you know that this stuff, this is real. It never ended. It's just not called the Hellfire Club no more. It's just different secret societies that still do this stuff. You know what I'm saying? But this is, the Hellfire Club is the original secret sex cult. This is where it all came from. So I thought this was super interesting to bring to the channel because, like I said, yet again, it just exposes more of what Stranger Things tries to do to little kids and their minds. We already know CERN is one of the biggest topics that get brought up in the Large Hadron Collider with Stranger Things. That's like the biggest, you know, um, I guess the biggest thing we tie to, you know, um, the conspiracies or whatever. You know, I don't like to use that word, but sometimes I just for... Um, lack of a better word we'll say conspiracies right so anyways um before i come back and sort of wrap this video up let's just check out this short clip so you know i'm not sounding crazy you can see it right out of a uh, something that just recently happened a few years ago so check this out the jeffrey epstein scandal is so salacious and filthy and weird that sometimes it's hard to believe it isn't being copied from a novel Epstein is supposedly a billionaire, yet nobody seems sure how exactly he made his money. What does he do for a living? Nobody knows. His home is full of bizarre features like artificial eyeballs or a chessboard with pieces modeled on his staff, supposedly. But the most disconcerting part of the saga is just how many people are tied to it. Basically, everyone you've ever heard of, dozens of famous, rich, influential people turned out to be friends with Jeffrey Epstein. His predatory behavior toward teenage girls was apparently an open secret everyone knew and yet he remained a free man for decades. Michael Warren Davis is a contributor to the American Conservative. He just wrote a very smart piece warning that the Epstein scandal is, quote, how revolutions begin. He joins us tonight. Davis, thanks very much for coming on. What does you mean, this like, is how revolutions begin? Well, like I said in the piece, stories like this break, <clears throat> and you can really see why the French 
decided to march their aristocracy into the sweet embrace of Madame la Guillotine. Um, Tucker, people used to believe in this thing <laughs> called the Hellfire Club. Uh, the rich and powerful would meet in secret for these weird, opulent orgies. Um, and right. they protected each other. And that's the crucial thing, because they all had blackmail on each other. Um, come to find, the Hellfire Club <laughs> is 100% real. Uh, you know, the, this cabal of, of depraved, decadent elites, it really exists. And, uh, and Jeffrey Epstein, Clinton donor, um, close personal friend of, of President Clinton, uh, he's at the center of it. So this is the kind of story where people looking on decide, actually, the system is every bit as rotten as I suspected it was, maybe more rotten, and it makes them radical. That's right. I think, uh, I think Jeffrey Epstein will do to, uh, to the D.C. establishment what ex-Cardinal Theodore McCarrick did to the church, uh, sadly. Everyone in the Catholic hierarchy knew about Cardinal McCarrick. Um, everyone knew right. that he was preying on altar boys and seminarians, even people that we would consider good bishops, otherwise good bishops, knew about McCarrick, and by and large they did nothing. Uh, and it's the same yeah. thing with the admissions scandal. Um, you know, everyone knew that these celebrities were paying for their children to go to the Ivy League. That was an open secret. But when the story broke, everyone pretended to be surprised. Uh, it's, the same th right. it's the same thing. And people look at the system it is. and they say it's rigged. And you know what? It is. <laughs> it is rigged. It is. Um, yeah, they're, they're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. The Hellfire Club. That is. Now, um... So now that we see, you know, that was basically a clip, a clip from Tucker Carson where they were talking about Jeffrey Epstein being a part of the Hellfire Club. So that pretty much goes to confirm everything, um, you know, as far as it's still existing today, right? Um, that I'm not just sitting here tying this to Stranger Things just for no reason. You know, I, I'm, I'm actually glad I found that supporting clip because it relates to something that just happened and we all know what jeffrey epstein was a part of this video is not actually to go into that because i don't want to ring too many flags here on youtube with this video right so here's a quick picture of stranger things with everybody with the stranger i mean uh with the hellfire club shirts on right so we remember the as we talked about in the beginning of the video the original hellfire club was founded by philip duke of wharton right 718 i mean uh 1718 it was basically disbanded in 1721, right? Um, the club leader, the leader of the of the Hellfire Club, would be called the Devil. Now, this was basically, it was mockery of God. It was mockery of religion. The members were to come dressed as biblical characters, where they would hail, um, they would hold religious ceremonies, and they would eat meals that were named in, you know, kind of like a mocking way, Holy Ghost Pie breast of venus and devil's loin like a tenderloin but devil's loin right so this was when basically the most notorious of the hellfire club was actually started by sir francis dashwood right um it was in his club where they would really do the mockery the sex you know the satanic sex stuff and all the orgies and having sex with little boys and so on and so on and i'm pretty sure little girls were involved as well but it was not a club just for men they also had women in the club um a part of the club as well right so um i think another thing that is actually very very significant to the occult and where the term actually came from and had this medieval ruin entirely renovated in gothic style for the purpose of this club written into a stained glass window on the doorway was the club's motto and basically that motto i'm not even going to try to pronounce that i'm pretty sure that's um it's french or something so basically that club's motto was do what thou wilt and this was way back in 1770 i mean uh, 1751 now, we know who's most famous today for making that term known, and that is Aleister Crawley with the do what thou wilt. Remember when Jay-Z first wore it years ago and everybody went crazy like that he had that shirt on that said do what thou wilt. 
So now we finally understand and we finally see where that quote actually comes from. All the way back to 1751, people. This stuff has been going on. These secret societies, it's been around. So, you know, I thought this video was super, you know, interesting because we've basically found out things in this videos that um, in this video that we've been asking questions to. Most people didn't know that, you know, you probably thought Aleister Crowley just came up with the term do what thou wilt. But really, it came from the Hellfire Club, something that I'm pretty sure he was a part of as well. You know? Um, so, so yeah, man, um, you know, I, I think, I think this was a super, super dope video to do. You know, it, it's, it's definitely relevant with the things that, um, I like to talk about on this channel because y'all know I'm not, I'm not really afraid to go there with any video. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm ready and willing to talk about any topic, you know what I'm saying? And, and things like this just kind of get me going and it fuels me to you know, basically just keep going because this was something new for me. I didn't know about this. I'm not going to sit here and lie to y'all. I don't know everything. I don't know everything at all. Like I'm still constantly researching and listening and finding out new things. That's what this is all about because we don't know it all. You know, a lot of this stuff we can only scratch the surface on. We can get very close. So yeah, man, um, you know, y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comments, man. Uh, hopefully we could get a good conversation going back and forth. You know, um, and if some of y'all did know about this, you know, let me know. Let me know what y'all think, man. Um, and yeah, man, with that being said, it's Black Balloon. And I'm going to see y'all soon. I'm out.